So those previous few slides were talking kind of conceptually about the reaction between ammonia and hydrochloric acid and how it would be acidic when you titrate a strong acid with a weak base. But it didn't really go through the math of it just yet. It was more conceptual, right? So here's going to be our first example of how you would calculate the pH of this resulting solution. So it gives us a little more specifics this time. What if we mixed 25 milliliters of 0.016 molar ammonia with 25 milliliters of 0.016 molar hydrochloric acid? What would the pH of that solution be at that point in time? It also gives us the Ka value for the ammonium ion. So that first line says we're mixing a weak base with a strong acid. What type of pH would you expect? So we saw in the previous video that when you do that strong acid with a weak base, the strong acid wins. That's kind of a nice easy way to remember it. That's not really the AP explanation for it though. The AP explanation has to do with what it was mentioning at the end of that last video, that you have the uh, conjugate acid of your weak base reacts with the water, and you get that secondary reaction where we have additional hydronium ions being formed, and those extra hydronium ions makes the pH acidic. So we should see a pH that's less than 7 somehow but what is the value exactly? So we're gonna go through a few steps here to try and figure that out. So the first thing, step one, is writing a whole bunch of balanced reactions. We're gonna do an equation with the ammonia with water. We'll do a reaction with the acid with water. We also need a reaction between the ammonia and the hydrochloric acid and then we have that secondary reaction that takes place when that ammonium ion forms and it reacts with the water. We're going to get that reaction written as well. We're going to do the math like we did in an earlier video of how do we prove that we're at the equivalence point or not. Little more math to figure out how many moles of important ions are formed. A little more math to figure out the molarity of your newly formed ion. A little more math with some ice tables. And then one more step there with some math, finding the pH. So let's do step one. Lots of reactions to write. So the first ones we want to write are the acid and the base reacting with water. This step allows us to figure out what are the important ions that I have to worry about here. So when we put the acid, hydrochloric acid, in water, it's a strong acid. It's going to completely ionize into chloride and hydronium. So the big important ion out of that reaction is the hydronium. Then we need our base reacting with water. When you put ammonia in water, you do get a little bit of ammonium and hydroxide, but not much since ammonia is not on our strong base list. It's a weak base. It stays mostly as molecules. So the big important molecule in that second reaction is the ammonia. Now we need to react those big important ions and molecules with each other. So the third reaction we are going to write here is between the H3O plus and the NH3. When H3O plus and NH3 react with one another, the H3O plus is our acid, our proton donor. It transfers the proton to the ammonia, our base, which is acting like a proton acceptor. After the ammonium ion transfers that proton, it turns into water, the conjugate base of H3O+, and then the ammonia, the base, turns into the ammonium ion, the conjugate acid. The tricky part about when you're doing strong acid, weak base reactions, or 
the opposite, weak base, uh, whoops, I said that backwards, or weak acid, strong base, uh, that the tricky part is the products of those reactions can react with each other and form even more products. So we're going to do an extra reaction between the water and the ammonium ion. The water in this reaction is acting like a base, a proton acceptor. The ammonium ion is our acid, proton donor. After the water accepts the proton, it turns into water's conjugate acid, H3O+, and after NH4 plus donates its proton, it turns into the conjugate base, ammonia. Step two wants us to prove mathematically that we're at the equivalence point. Remember the equivalence point is the stoichiometric ratio point. So what we need to do is first write a reaction there between the ammonia and the hydrochloric acid. Well, we just did that. That was one of the reactions that we wrote a second ago. There's a one-to-one -one ratio between the hydronium ion and the ammonia in our balanced equation. So if we want to prove that we're at the equivalence point, we need to prove that the amount of moles of ammonia and moles of acid are also in a one-to-one -one ratio at this point in time. So we need to do a little bit of factor label. If we have 25 milliliters of acid and you know the molarity of that acid, you can turn milliliters into liters, then liters into moles, and you know how many moles of NH3 have reacted at this point in time. We can do the same thing with our hydrochloric acid. Because we are talking about the same volume and the same molarity, we're going to have the same number of moles of HCl. Since the moles that reacted, 0 0.0004 moles of ammonia and 0 0.0004 moles worth of HCl are in a one-to-one -one ratio, and it matches the one-to-one -one ratio between ammonia and hydrochloric acid, that's how we know we're at the equivalence point. Now for right now, we're doing problems that are at the equivalence point. And so you might feel like this step is a little unnecessary. Uh, but you'll see that we have some problems coming up in the future where you won't know if you're at the equivalence point or not. So it's a really good habit to get into just to check, to verify if you're at that moment in time. Because if you're at the equivalence point, you get to make a few assumptions as you're going to see on the next couple of slides. If you're not at the equivalence point, you can't make those assumptions, and then that's where things get even harder. Uh, so we have to stick with that idea. It seems a little silly and unnecessary right now, but you'll be glad if you get in the habit now of doing this check of am I at the equivalence point or not. Step three wants to know how many moles worth of important ions have been formed we just proved a second ago that we're at the equivalence point in that previous step, right? So if you're at the equivalence point, that means you don't have any limiting or excess reactants. They both run out at the exact same time because we're reacting according to the stoichiometry. What that means if you don't have any limiting or excess reactants is that you have products only. So and there's our balanced equation we don't have any hydronium or ammonia left over. We 100% have water and the ammonium ion. Since there's no limiting or excess reactants, it doesn't matter which reactant you start your stoic problem with to determine how many moles of ammonium would be formed in that reaction. So you could tack on that one extra step there and start with your ammonia and say there's a one-to-one -one ratio between ammonia and the ammonium ion, and you'd get that 0 0.0004 moles of ammonium. Or you could do it with the acid. 
because we're at that stoichiometric ratio, we're at the equivalence point, it doesn't matter which reactant you start with for your stoic problem to decide how many moles worth of ammonium are formed. We get the same answer either way. In problems that are coming in your future, we won't be at the equivalence point, meaning there will be limiting and excess reactants. And then it would matter which reactant you start your stoic problem with to figure out how many moles worth of product are being formed. But those are coming. We're not there yet. Step four, we're trying to figure out the molarity of our newly formed ion. So remember we mix 25 milliliters of our ammonia with 25 milliliters of our acid, according to that balanced chemical equation. We just figured out on the previous slide that we're making 0 0.0004 moles worth of ammonium ions. And then to do molarity, like it's asking us, if you want molarity, you need to consider moles and volume. So we know the moles part, where are we going to get the volume part from? The volume is going to be the sum of the volumes of the acid and base we mix together to make the ammonium ion. So we mix 25 milliliters of base with 25 milliliters of acid to make our 0 0.0004 moles of ammonium. So we have 50 milliliters of solution at this moment in time. So now we know the moles of ammonium and we know its volume. So we can switch those moles per 50 milliliters, little factor label there, and we can change that into moles per liter instead. So now we have 0 0.0080 moles per liter of ammonium ions. Now what? Ice table time. Since you're at the equivalence point for your reaction, there's no limiting or excess reactants. Both of those reactants get entirely used up and converted into products. So if there's no hydronium and no ammonia, you don't have to worry about those guys. You only have to worry about the water and the ammonium. Since we only have water and ammonium left in the flask, now we have to worry about the reaction that happens between them. You wrote that reaction during step one. There's our reaction between water and the ammonium ion, where the ammonium donates the proton to water, turning it into hydronium and ammonia. You know the molarity of that ammonium ion that's reacting with water. You just found that in step four. So now we can set up an ice table find out how much hydronium forms, and get the pH. So there's our reaction. I've labeled which what is acting like a base, what's acting like an acid, right? Our conjugate acids, our conjugate bases. Water doesn't have a molarity. The ammonium ion does and we don't have any hydronium or ammonia to start. The hydronium ion, or excuse me, the ammonium ion is going to come down by some amount X, and our hydronium and ammonia come up by some amount X. Then it told us in the problem what the Ka was for NH4+. This is a Ka reaction, the ammonium ion reacting with water. So we can use that Ka value and decide, can we ignore x in this problem? And yes, we can, because even if we do 100 times that K value, it's still smaller than our initial molarity. So our ammonium ion can stay at 0 0.0080. Then we have our equilibrium expression for Ka. We could solve for x. x is both the concentration of the hydronium ion and the ammonia. 2.1 times 10 to the negative 6. 
Finally, last step. Now that we know what the hydronium ion concentration is, we could take the negative log of that number and find the pH of the solution. We were expecting an acidic pH at the equivalence point since we're reacting a weak base with a strong acid. So when you do that, a strong acid, weak base, the resulting solution is going to be a little bit acidic. The pH is not 7, it's 5.67 in this case. So the easy way to remember it, strong acid plus weak base, a strong acid wins. But that's not what you should write down on your AP exam. The AP explanation would be that when hydrochloric acid and ammonia react, you get ammonium ions and water forming. You get a secondary reaction between those ammonium ions and the water that create additional hydronium ions. And those additional hydronium ions are the ones that cause the resulting solution to be a little bit on the acidic side.